Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're continuing on getting you ready for 2021 fantasy football season. Well, actually, some of you have already drafted, which is crazy. We did five relegation league drafts last night, Jeff. Well, I did five relegation league drafts. At one point, at one time, and the funny thing is, I think I got one of my one of these players on my draft last night. That's going to be on my list today. So I'm lying, <laughs> so, so, but yeah, so no, almost no. never draft. But if you're paying attention, don't draft. That's the my, that's the key. Don't do five at one time. Pay I attention know. to what you're doing and don't panic. Click a button because I did it. And then I was very sad afterwards, I'll say. So today's list is going to be our do not draft list. Me and Jeff both have three players each that just we can't find ourselves drafting basically based off their current ADP. I mean, obviously, nobody is ever a complete do not draft because if one of these guys for some reason slipped two, three rounds later, yeah, of course, we'd look at it. But they're not. They're not slipping there and they're not going to. So because of that, they're do not draft. In my mind, so right. that's pretty much. So, quick um, before we get into this, Jeff. Um, so you you didn't see these drafts. So we did the relegation league started out. We actually expanded the relegation league to twenty nine leagues now, like three hundred and forty eight teams or something ridiculous. It's it's pretty it's pretty pretty crazy. But we did five drafts last night. Three of my drafts, I have Nick Chubb, uh, J.K. Dobbins, and Travis Etienne. Three <laughs> of the five. Three of the five. So, you know, we better be right. So that's all all I can say. But all right. So Nick Chubb, I'll say one thing, Nick Chubb in ESPN ranks, if you're doing a standard, you know, draft in ESPN, um, they put Nick Chubb as 14th player in the draft. So if you're drafting with just a bunch of people that don't know what they're doing, I mean, he's not fourth. He's not a second round player. No, that's pretty impressive. So, I mean, you can, you can really beat up on some people, but you get some great value there. So, and Austin Eckler's like eighth. So, you know, I, eh, I don't agree with that, but all right, here we go. Do not draft Jeff. We each got three. Start me off with your first one. Uh, The first guy I'm going to talk about is someone I kind of hammered home early on in the offseason. My feelings about him hasn't changed a lot. He's one that if he fell or whatever, fine. Like I would have no issue with it. But there's a lot of guys around that that wide receiving spot that I would rather go in a different direction. I think that he could easily kind of crash back down to earth. And I'm going to talk about Mike Evans. So Tampa Bay, he was really good last year. Don't get me wrong. He's been very good for a very long time. But what freaked me out last year is he had such a high amount of touchdowns caught. Uh, Godwin was hurt. Antonio Brown wasn't on the team until the second half of the year. There was Gronk wasn't getting going. There was a lot of things that helped him be the number one wide receiver on that team. And right now he's being drafted as the 13th overall wide receiver. It's just too rich for my blood. It doesn't mean he's a bad player, but uh, if he comes up, in that spot, I'm going a different direction. So, uh, you know, the short and long of it, uh, Mike yeah. Evans would be my number three. Uh, so Mike Evans was going to be my number three as well. So I'm a hundred percent on board with it. I'll add to it though. Honestly, I'd put Chris Godwin here too. I'm I'm a hundred percent actually doubling down on that. Huh? Yeah. So I think current ADP, I think Evans was about 11th. Godwin was 15th. Now this isn't, I'm not saying they're bad players. They're not. I like both these players. And Chris Godwin actually is one of the guys I picked last night that I was kind of talking about is I went with Godwin once and I'm just, after I did it, I'm just like, no, no, I don't. Why did I, I panicked? I was like, it was one of those where I didn't have enough time to get myself done. I just clicked the button. I'm like, no, that's not, I don't want it. Cause I don't, here's the thing. I don't want to get those guys at the price they're going. Cause I see Antonio Brown sitting there and I see Antonio Brown at right now, like ADP 41. Why do I want to get the, guy who's going 11th, the guy's going 15th in a, in an offense that very easily the 41, the guy who's going 41 could be, he's going to be just, as, I think he's going to be just as involved. I really do. Tom Brady seems to really like Antonio Brown. Obviously, you know, he was over the Patriots for a game. Tom Brady's the reason Antonio Brown is back in Tampa. I don't see how he's not going to be used. And we've talked about Antonio Brown's numbers a few weeks back, maybe a month or so ago uh, in this, wh- how, what his numbers were when he actually played. And I believe he was a top 20 receiver in his time as with Tampa in the NFL was a top 20 receiver and that's just coming off the street. Right. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, every, every time he has come back to play, he has been productive immediately. And I mean that, and that's saying something too, because it was a, it was very hit and miss whether or not he was even going to play. And we saw in the Patriots even too, once again, those with Tom Brady. So that's why I loved him so much, but 
Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, I 100% back you up when you're talking about Antonio Brown because I think yep. that he is one of those like steals of the draft at the moment. Yep. Um, and I will say this, though, and I can say Mike Evans is definitely that one. And Chris Godwin, uh, I'm, I get your point. I get it. But I get I'm it. a little less because he is like ranked 16th. So he so, might actually go like a round later. And, and then I'm feeling like Godwin and Evans might as well be the same guy kind of thing. So, and Godwin has kind of um, fluctuated. I think he, uh, current like 80, I think he's ranked 16th. looks like, yeah, currently looks like ADP's 15th as of the second. And I get it where he goes. You look at the board and you're like, ah, uh, yeah, let's pick Godwin. Right. I guess. Right. It seems, I think, um, if he stays below like Julio, Allen Robinson, CD lamb, I'm good with it. I'm, I'm, I'm better with it. I guess, you know, Mike Evans ahead of those guys. I just mentioned like again, especially ahead of um, CD lamb and ahead of Allen Robinson. I don't want any part of Mike Evans over those two. No, all. I agree with you on that. Yeah. CD lamb is jumping up boards all over the place. Like he yeah, seems to be the hyped player right now. Well, I like CD lamb. He's getting, it get, always gets to the point where, okay, we're really, uh, we're really jumping this guy. I like him. I like him. I really do. I do like CD Lamb, but whew, let's let's just uh I like I like he, him when he's a value. I can't believe I'm about <laughs> to say this. He might actually make Amari Cooper a value. Amari Cooper is about 18th right now. So <laughs> okay, with, I was gonna say he's 15th, I don't know what I'm looking at, but okay, yeah, yeah. So if he's 18th, all of a sudden I'm like right. I, he was always the guy that I was like, I just don't want to get him at like nine. And exactly, then, you know, back in the like the last two years you did. Yep. Now I'm like, oh yeah, this is value. Like I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, but I think I think I brought I think I might have brought up Cooper a while back where he's like, hey, it's starting to <laughs> you not be crazy. Yeah. It's it's okay. So all right, there we go. Number three, Evans for you. Evans slash Godwin for me. Lesser yeah. on Godwin. I, I did pick him last night, so I can't say it's perfect. I just didn't love it outside of that. I just yeah. felt it, it could work out though. I just like the Antonio Brown value much much better. Yeah, totally right. get it. Number two. Number two, I'm going with a guy that will make everyone lose their mind a little bit. Um, I've talked about him before as well, but I'm going with Elvin Kamara. So it is not because he's a bad player. Once again, it is because he's literally going fourth overall. So you have one chance to get him. And mm -hmm. if I'm picking fourth or in the top four, he's not going to be the guy I pick. And, and we've gone over a bevy of situations and reasons why. But the biggest one is the QB situation is very, uh, very unstable at the moment. I mean, if, and we keep talking about like, okay, if, uh, you know, if Taysom Hill wins it, this could be a very big problem for him. And right yeah. now all you're hearing is he's going to get a real shot and mm -hmm. going into that fight right now, like an injury could happen to Jameis Winston. I mean, it could happen to Hill too, but if Taysom Hill goes in there and, and rushes 10, you know, 10 TDs or whatever it may be, you start scrambling all over the place and he's not a, a, a great passer, at least for the first half of the year, it has to hurt Kamara's uh, numbers and you could be getting Chubb there. You could be getting, I mean, you know, you could list a million different people off because you're the fourth pick. So I have to put him in here, even though he might be one of the most talented players in the NFL, he's not worth the risk at that high of a draft pick. And yeah, it's... He didn't make my list, but I don't feel comfortable with him as much as I love the player. I love, I, I, I do. And I just, that situation is so just all over the place right now. We have no idea who the quarterback's going to be. We really don't. I mean, I honestly, it can change day to day. And you see blurbs that change it day to day. You, no one knows. I don't know. It, either way, if Jameis wins the job, you know that's not the end of Taysom Hill. It's not. Taysom Hill is yeah. going to be used. That actually might even, and, and that's the hardest part. I'm like, maybe that's even worse because as soon as Taysom Hill comes yeah. in, now you know that they're giving him the ball or they're rushing it or they're doing yeah. something crazy. And that directly takes out of the mouth of Elvin Kamara. Well, and here's another thing that you could probably make an argument for this either way if you want. And that's what, that's what happens in fantasy. Of course, People make yeah. these arguments. So Michael Thomas, he's hurt. He's not going to be around for a bit, right? Does that mean more targets for Elvin Kamara? Or does that mean... Alvin Kamara is the only weapon left. So teams are just going to concentrate on Alvin Kamara. Like, right, 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 right. Exactly. You know, and you, it, could, you could it, argue either, either way. way. So, because yeah. without, without Thomas, their receivers are Traquan Smith, which maybe, 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 but we've seen, we've had this Traquan Smith hype, what, a couple different times over the last year. Has it really happened? I mean, there's been very few flashes. It, maybe, maybe he does something. They have Mar uh, Marquez Calloway is getting a little bit of hype lately. The, their number two, possibly. He's now, 
vaulted vaulted into the 80s in ADP at wide receiver. He was in the hundreds. Vaulted. It's funny. He was like he was like an interesting like deep sleeper type player who's now I think going to get a little too overhyped. Then they have Deontay Harris, who's I like Deontay Harris, but he's miniature, so <laughs> I don't know if he can do anything. And then they got Adam Troutman, who we like again, yeah. but he hasn't actually done anything. No, so, and he might I'll, start getting overhyped. <laughs> so where, where's all the concentration? The defense going to go? You know. Yeah, it, it just so and if you if you're if you're a fan, you can craft that argument to your, you know, you're you're like, you know, all the targets are going to go to him. Right. Yeah, I get it. But I'm going to make it make myself uneasy with it and just be like, mm, I'm probably passing. Well, and especially when you have to get him in the first half of the first. And again, round. this this changes maybe if he dropped to the back end of the first different story, but he never does. No, and he's not going to he uh, average. Yeah. ADP right now, I believe is four. Yeah, he doesn't fall to that spot he just doesn't so you're just not going to get him so I'm, i didn't put him on my list but yeah i'm not yeah i'm not saying i'm fully do not draft him but most likely not most very most likely. unless you know this obviously changes if Jameis winston is announced 100 we know for sure he's the starter and it's like relatively soon it makes it a little less uneasy i would say but i wouldn't even do that because taste will play. Go in, but, but he's still gonna go in the first yeah. round so I'm, yeah. yeah i'm not gonna do it yep all right, so I went um, maybe a little easier. This is this might be not as you know crazy of a name. People might think this is why would you pick this guy? He's not that you know. It's not a you're not risking much. I went with Miles Gaskin, and uh, exactly. Are you ever going to draft Miles Gaskin, Jeff? Ever? No, no, I mean it's very true. No, but I was like, oh, you reached deep into that one. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I like to go from Camara. To I know. Gaskin. I'm saving my big name for last. I don't okay, want to end okay. it with Miles Gaskin. That's fair, though. I mean, there might be a, a few like, a well, few people out there that are like, he's a value pick, and I, I could see that. But I don't, okay, he's so not. That, he's not. Go he's ahead not. and go ahead and make he's, your argument. I, I, he's I, I ADP. Just left. <laughs> I knew you were going. That's right. He's ADP twenty three. So in a twelve team league, that's a number. That's a running back too. That's a second running back. Is there any scenario where you want Miles Gaskin as your second running back? Ever? I mean, that would be that would be a panic pick. He's not any better than the other guys on his team. He's not better than Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown might pass him. He's not better than Salvin Ahmed, Ahmed, whatever his name is from last. He's not. He is not better than those guys. I think Malcolm Brown's better than him. Malcolm Brown would not shock me if he passed him. Worst, in, you know what? This is in either way. No one is winning this job outright. This is going to be a straight up committee with at least three guys, maybe more. Maybe Patrick Laird gets some carries yet. Maybe uh, Dokes, the rookie, gets some carries. There's five guys who could play. There is no way Miles Gaskin gets this job completely. I can't see it. He is a very, very average running back who just had a little bit of opportunity. Because when Ahmed came in last year, he was just as good, just as good. So the current depth chart Miami play um, came out. Gaskin was one. Brown was two right now. I think Malcolm Brown's going to get some work. I really do. And Gaskin is going. So Gaskin, this is part of the reason why. And the players around Gaskin. Gaskin's 23. Um, Javante Williams is 24. I'd rather take a chance on the rookie. For sure. 25, Travis Etienne. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, all day, all day. Yeah, there is actually quite a few people. I didn't realize. I mean, yeah, Mel, I guess Mel, this is Melvin why. Gordon. I'm going to go Melvin Gordon over yeah, here. Yeah, he, he's, not a, go, guy, he's yeah. not a guy you think of, but I, I'm well, actually kind of shocked well, that he's, he's some, 22 well, currently on fantasy. Yeah, pros. think of these other guys around him. Marheem, Marheem Moster. I don't I, love Marheem I, Moster, I, but I know Kareem I, Hunt is the number two, but I'd rather have Kareem Hunt. Yeah, well, um, Chase Edmonds. I shoot, Chase Edmonds yeah, might have a real opportunity. Honestly, Leonard I mean, Fournette even, and Robert I mean, Jones. Damian Harris, take a, well, a shot at yeah. the Damian Harris, Daryl Henderson, uh, Michael Carter. I, shoot, yeah, I, no, actually, no, I, I should have laughed so hard. It's a good, it's a, a good thing to bring up. Yeah. yeah, because he is going at this level that is just he is a okay. If he was at the if he was down around 30th, rank 30th, better better scenario. You know, I right, get right. it as your third running back, a little better, but even then I don't want him. I just don't. I really don't want him. I would take a chance on some of these other guys, like you know the Michael Carter, who's thirty fourth. You know what? I'm not done with Leonard Fournette, to be honest. I think Leonard Fournette actually has a real could have something there. Um, Ronald Jones makes it, so it's probably you know split. But there's a lot of these other guys that shoot. I'll take a chance. You know what? This is weird for me to say, but I probably want Zach Moss over him. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm not ready to go there. Not but. Devin Singletary, though. <laughs> not Devin Singletary. Never again. You're dead to me, Devin. Zach Moss, maybe. But seriously, that's where it's at. He's a, he's a running back, too? No, no. If you Okay, if Miles Gaskin is your running back, too, you know, thanks for donating to the league, pretty much. <laughs> you know, that's what you're going to do. 
That's what you're getting. You're not going to win. I will not draft him in, in our, in our auction leagues. I will not draft him. I will let him go to one of those other guys in our league. Who's not good at fantasy football, which I'm not <laughs> going to say a name. I'm just not going to say it. John. I didn't say that. So, all right. The death silence. Yep. All right. So we're on to the number one, number one. Number one for me is going to be, it might tear your heart out actually, but it was a guy that you brought to my attention and we started talking about more. <laughs> Terry more. McLaurin? Yeah, it's Terry McLaurin. God, I, no, no. I can't no. do it. He's just, he's way too high. He is, he's right now, he's ranked as the 10th overall wide receiver, I believe. He's had two years in the league and I realize he's never had the best situation as far as QB, but he's finished 24th both times. And even worse is like, I mean, it's good for him, I guess, but he had 134 targets last year. Caught 87 balls, uh, you know, a little over 1,100 yards and four touchdowns. Not a bad output by any stretch of the imagination. You do have Fitzpatrick now. You're hoping that they, you know, the Washington Football Club or whatever the heck they call themselves now is, um, you know, they're, they're going in the right direction. And I think they are. And this is probably his best QB, but I cannot see a world where he gets more than 134 targets. And you can up his TD, you know, total to seven. And I think that would be okay. You're you're putting him up into pretty decent play, like the numbers that he would have to have a very good year for. And you're still not going to hit that that return on your investment of a top 10 wide receiver when you can go and get a, another running back instead. You can wait on wide receiver, get Antonio Brown. You, there, there's a bunch of guys you can wait and get much, much later that I think could be as productive as him. So every time I, I look at him, I'm like, I know he's talented and I want to give him a shot. But that is way, way too high of a price for a guy that has not done it. Well, I mean, he's kind of done it. He's been good. Uh, it, uh, 24. With, with, with like what as his quarterback? Dwayne Haskins, a banged up Alex Smith. Yeah, I mean, 100%. But, and Fitzpatrick, I do think he's an upgrade, but you. Maybe How I'm overvaluing. I don't know. Maybe I'm overvaluing Fitzpatrick. I just I, also I, I, I do think Washington's defense is actually pretty legit. They're, they're like pretty if good. They stay healthy, they'll be pretty good. They will not have to have Fitzpatrick slinging the ball like he did in in you know in Miami, you know, year okay. uh, a couple of years ago. You make some points. You made some points. That's it. I'm not gonna say they're good. I'm just gonna say they're points. They're just there. <laughs> that was a, nothing. No, I made some points. All right. Yeah. And no, I know you love him. And I, he is a talented dude. I, I'm not going to take just, away from him. I mean, I just literally, like, <laughs> he might show up. We're going to do a players I love list later this week. Oh, my God. And <laughs> if, like, if well, no, this is going to be the biggest difference we have this if year. You're, if you're on Instagram, you probably already got a preview of my list. But <laughs> to go to Instagram.com slash fantasy football profit. I was uh, I didn't really think about it, but I was made aware I have some Ohio State Buckeyes that are populating my list quite a bit, which. How was it? Terry McLaurin, Dobbins. Yeah, I'm trying to think who they. We'll are. see. We'll see who makes my official official list you later gonna, this week. You put Fields out there. Um, all right. Oh God, so I do. Mc... I actually like drafting. I, I don't, but I okay. think he's intriguing. So Terry McLaurin is my number one. Do not draft. Yeah. Who is yours? Mine is going to be Saquon Barkley. Oh wow. Okay. So I'm just there's. Okay. Did... Here, be honest before you get on the. <laughs> yeah. How much did the news of that? fight breaking out camp and uh and one of the linemen retiring how much did that well, you're just like no or there's a lot of things. nothing to do so with there, it? there's a few things honestly so first off how healthy is it I, you hear too much where when you start hearing these okay with, with training camp preseason the all the the positive stuff you hear oh, ignore it for the most part it's all fluff right when you're hearing negative uh pay attention i feel like Honestly, the good stuff, it's everyone can say the good stuff. It's good advice. Yeah. Why aren't we hearing? Um, I mean, how good Saquon looks coming back from injury. Oh, the guy, you know, he's 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 not there, obviously. He's not ready. He's not ready. I can't draft I can't draft my first round player, my first round running back with a guy who might miss a few weeks and might not be fully healthy and is on a team that seems to have some issues. Like there just seems to be something in that locker room that's not quite right. You know, I don't know. Is it Joe Judge trying to be Belichick? We've seen that in Detroit. We've seen what happens when a, a Belichick guy thinks he's Belichick. Yeah, you it's know, not pretty. it doesn't work. It barely works with Belichick. I mean, he it worked for a while only because Tom Brady stayed there and Tom Brady had enough of it even, you know. So 
something, something feels off. The injury scares me. I just need to see, I need to hear more <laughs> just like, I need to hear more just, Oh yeah. Saquon looks great. You know, I heard, um, because even freaking in, in NBA, Jamal Murray tore his ACL like four or five months ago. And people, and I saw an article the other day, he's already back on his feet. He's looking good. Five months later, you don't hear anything about I feel that like, sick one. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of get where you're coming from, but I, I feel like it might have got drowned out because, I mean, he got hurt. It felt like forever ago now. He did. He did. And um, there's just like no guarantee there's of just... him doing stuff, but it's the same thing. I feel like they always uh, like, upgrade you to contacts and everything like really, really late. Like even Dak, I mean, you, you heard really good things about him, but didn't he just get, so uh, he's going to process. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Yeah. He's the, the talk is he might be coming back to practice. We'll see if that okay. happens. And he, if, so he's on the pup list currently, that's not going to stay. He's not going to miss the first six weeks or whatever. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I just worry that he's not going to be fully healthy the first couple of weeks. And I, it's a lot to, you know, when there's other guys around there, it's a lot to spend, yeah. but, but here goes the thing, I guess maybe does this hurt his value enough where he does drop and becomes about val- becomes more valuable at if, some point. He's at, six right now though. He's six. Yeah, right I was going to say, I, I can't see him dropping out of the first round. It, no. And like I can't either. Alvin Kamara thing where it's like, if you drop out of the first round, then of course, like, why would well, I take the shot? At he's you, sixth in ADP right now, but like, okay, I'm telling you ESPN really drives. And that's, this is sixth without an ESPN in this listing to be honest. So oh, wow. if you, if you went like off like an ESPN, he goes probably higher if not, but other players like Nick Chubb go below him who goes, you know, ESPN really can mess with this, yeah. whatever ESPN ranks people. This is what you got to look at. So if you're playing in a league where your, your buddy, you just some, you know, your buddies don't listen to, maybe they don't listen to fantasy football podcasts that they're going to lose if they're not listening to us. So they're just going to go off the ESPN ranks you know, there's, there's, you know, stake on there's Nick Chubb at 14. That guy must suck. You know, I like, mean, that's a real thing that they really do drive. Uh, they do. Know. And that's not part of like fantasy pros um, ADP. So that's, you know, that can really affect things. So like, you really got to know what, what site you're drafting on. And honestly, you can go take, take advantage of ESPN's ranks. If you're in a league where people aren't, you know, oh, without ass. doubt. I, I, that's a huge one too, is to what, whichever platform you're drafting on. I think you have to go on there just to see where they rank people and where they're going to put them and make your list and everything of that nature. Because yeah, it really Sa- does help a lot. Sa- Saquon's going ahead of on ESPN right now. It looks like he's going ahead of Zeke and Chubb and Aaron Jones and Jonathan yeah. Taylor. I, I, I do have to say, and Saquon, I, I do believe he's going to be healthy and uh, probably have a little less doubt than you do. Yeah. But the team, the way that the team, like I thought this year was going to be like, it's going to be make and break for, for Daniel Jones. It's like Gallaudet is coming. Like they have a bunch of young guys that want to prove themselves. They were supposed to get a improved uh, offensive line. And then you hear nothing but bad stuff. Nothing, nothing, nothing. A big fight happens. Uh, you know, they're not getting along. And all of a sudden, I'm kind of in the same boat where I'm like, Oof. like we've seen it where Saquon's athletic ability was able to yeah. overcome a lot of that, and he still wasn't like a top well, five back, but he was he was really good. And that's part of it too. Is the last year You're we like, had Saquon play, he was slightly he disappointing. He was slightly yeah. disappointing the year before. He last year got injured the year before. He wasn't. Oh, oh, the year before. Yeah, yeah. 2019, he didn't just set the world on fire. He was no, no, but he, know, was, he was doing it in like in spite of his team. Exactly. So but like, if, are if we sure the team's any, are, yeah. Are we sure? Yeah. So I, I, I do, I can get behind that one actually. It's very scary. And I think when you're, you're drafting your first round guy, it's, I don't yeah. want any surprises because there's too much talent up there. You can grab one. And if you don't, if you really don't love a running back, you can always go get Devonte Adams. Yeah. You, get you pretty, a be real team. safe. Because you know, yeah. if you get Devonte Adams, you you feel pretty yeah, confident. Exactly, and I'll be honest, this uh, I, I, there's a bunch of guys up here. If you couldn't get like mm-hmm. McCaffrey or Cook, like maybe if you fall in that five six range, and you really don't feel good about any of the guys, because that is where mm-hmm. you know you're talking about Zeke, you're talking about yeah. Saquon, you're talking about maybe you don't like Chubb, you know whatever yeah. it may be. Uh, this is one draft where if I'm in the middle, I. I could make a very good argument for going Devonte Adams or Tyreek Hill, and then later on grabbing the guys we love a little bit later on. It would have to be like you know rounds two, three, four well, in there. But I love Dobbins. I love Swift. I think Etienne is going to be a steal. I think so. There are guys you would have to get them in a row, 
but I could spend a first round draft pick on a wide receiver. And I don't think it kills me this year, which I, could, I used to be like, no, no, no. Take a guaranteed guy. If I say, if you're drafting on ESPN with people that don't pay as much attention, you could easily go Devonte Adams, Nick Chubb. If you're back into the first, that yeah, wouldn't yeah, be a problem actually, at yeah, all. Without a doubt. Yeah. You know, after seeing those ranks, like I was and, getting Chubb in every draft. It was easy. And, <laughs> uh, it sounds funny, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was because I was, that uh, was my team. I love that and, much. And you can't, I, I realize that if you're in a full PPR, maybe it, it knocks him down a little bit, but Nick Chubb is as safe as they come because he, as far as we know, he's very durable. He's on a run first team and the guy is an absolute monster with a very good yeah. offensive line. So he is very, very safe to take. I don't think I had a pick higher than six. Then I got Chubb on every, like on all these spots. It was kind of, you know, a bit ridiculous to be honest. So, but all right. I didn't get Saquon anywhere. No Saquon, no Saquon, no Alvin Kamara either. I did get Derrick Henry once, but yeah, that's fun. Yeah. A lot of, uh, Nick Chubb, JK Dobbins, Travis Etienne, a lot of that. And to be honest, a lot of Trey Lance or Justin Fields at the end of draft is my number two. Yeah, why not? Yeah, the Trey Lance news. I love that they what they they say he yeah what they say some about having a little Mahomes in him, and I was like, don't stop that, don't do that. Maybe that poor that poor guy. Maybe maybe he does. Makes me get a second quarterback though. <laughs> that's where I get a second QB is one of those guys. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you why know, not? That's the QB situation is interesting in drafts. I waited and I didn't. I got I got Russell Wilson once. I got Aaron Rodgers once. I got Stafford once. No Tannehill, but eh, first uh, first five drafts of many to many to come. Yeah. Without so, doubt. so I'll say we um, have a couple more episodes this week. We'll also we have to do this soon. We had some uh, requests for some auction stuff, so we should uh, next week hit, hit up some auction stuff. Get some you know auction draft tips out there because oh that's still the best that's the best format to draft. If you haven't gone auction yet, you better you should do that. So we'll get some auction tr- t- tips and tricks out for you. Because some people are drafting right now, but still the main drafts are coming up in a few weeks. So we'll get some tips out for you on that too, but that'll do it for today. Talk to you guys later this week.